Hello there, it's me, Stephen Thomas with Reports on Housing, and we're here with just another housing debrief, so uh, thank you for joining us. First, I'd like to bring everybody up to speed as to exactly what's going on in the housing market uh, this week. So there's been a giant jump in rates. We got all the way, we were knocking on the door of 5% interest rates, and then along came the jobs report last week, and we'll get into more of that. But what did all of that do to the data? Well, within the last uh, two weeks, what we've seen is uh, demand no longer really uh, driving up at a, at a pretty decent clip. Uh, as a matter of fact, in looking at all markets combined, we still saw inventories uh, creep up a little bit higher as well as demand creep up a little bit higher. So overall, for every, all the metros that we cover, it was at the same rate. So the, uh, the pace of the market, what we call expected market time, that's the real speed of the market, has not changed in the past two weeks. So if, if we would have had rates that remained at right around 6%, just not even dip below 6%, we would have seen uh, demand go up a little bit higher and the inventories come down and the markets would continue to speed up. But that's not what's happened because of the fact that rates have increased, which the mere fact that we saw everything get so busy uh, as soon as we got towards 6%, you could tell that the longer that we were at uh, th those that lower range, the more activity it's going to create. So I was, you know, not pleasantly surprised, but uh, I, I was I was quite happy to see that this is once again when we test these lower levels like six percent or we know that below six percent, it's going to create a lot of activity, and uh, so that's where uh, things are headed in the future when we do have interest rates that come down with duration for a long time and may even go lower. Which brings us to today's topic, um, housing and a hot economy. Uh-oh. Kind of alluded to the, what the uh-oh is, and that is when we have a hot economy, uh, things happen uh, within real estate, especially with, uh, with interest rates uh, where they're at. And we're very, very interest rate sensitive. It's not just buyers that are interest rate sensitive. It, it's homeowners that become potential sellers as well as then become potential buyers. So overall, we're just seeing a freezing of the marketplace. And uh, it's, we're very, very economic dependent. And we're seeing that the United States economy has been pretty darned robust recently. And uh, so there were some hot readings that came out uh, last week. That was last Friday. We're recording this on a Friday. We had U.S. job creation roared higher in September as payrolls surged by 254,000. And that was that big jobs report. We were supposed to have a jobs report of around 150,000 was expectations. And instead, we hit 254,000. And uh, so you can see here, 254,000, we had unemployment go down. So unemployment was slowly but surely drifting higher. Then all of a sudden it went from 4.2 down to 4.1. And uh, you could see there's, uh, that that kind of changes the momentum. Hmm, what is going on? So, and yesterday we had a CPI, Consumer Price Index. That's the read on inflation, inflation rate hit 2.4% in September. It was higher than expectations, but coming down. Uh, and the jobless claims were the highest since August of 2023. That didn't even matter. That is initial jobless claims, and it didn't move the markets because of the CPI. It, uh, when you looked at core CPI, actually core CPI went up a little bit. That's the blue line. The uh, red line is is headline, and this is what everybody talks about because it includes fuel and gas, but really, what is it that the Fed can control? Not food and gas, but they can control other things by slowing down the economy. Even if they slowed the economy down by jacking up interest rates, we would still have gas prices where they uh, are, are at. So uh, they like to pull out the volatility of both fuel as well as food, and as a result, you get uh, this... Uh, core CPI. And that core CPI, it says 3.3%. I'm here to tell you that we've already showed through Wisdom Tree that there is, uh, it's kind of broken the core CPI. And that's because uh, of the, uh, 
the big, large component of shelter. Shelter is such a large component of, of, of the consumer price index that um, it, it artificially makes this core look higher. And the reason for that is because of the lag in the, in the, uh, the rent, rents coming down. And it's not actual rents. It's what they refer to, uh, refer to as owner equivalent rent. And what owner equivalent rent is just this giant survey that goes out asking homeowners exactly what how much they would rent their house for. So you can understand that uh, that is an, a it's a survey it's arbitrary and b it's a survey and it's arbitrary. How many homeowners really know how much their home can rent out for? So it's it's just the survey that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Now the Wisdom Tree updated that and it actually shows that. Uh, core inflation is just bouncing under 2%. Uh, so it's it's where it kind of needs to be. And the Federal Reserve recognizes this. So that's why these numbers did, it, it, it could have moved the market even more back in the day, but it didn't with this slight rise. But uh, more importantly, it washed out the uh, the higher initial jobless claims, which would have brought rates down a little bit more. So very few people are talking about that. They're still talking about this robust economy that we're having. And uh, so if you're a cheerleader for housing, if you want housing to thaw out and uh, you, you would like for there to be more transactions, more buyers that buy, and more homeowners that place their homes on the market so that there are, a- are actually more transactions. Because really, when interest rates are really high, it precludes the number of buyers that can even afford things. It also precludes the number of homeowners that become sellers. From, uh, so there are not uh, as many homeowners placing their homes on the market, which we've sh- proved in data. And so... If you're rooting for the housing market, you're rooting for rates to come down. And that's so that there could be more churn and more people that can now move around the country. You can move around the cabin again, unfasten your seatbelts type of thing. So these last reports are kind of boo on total boo on uh, the uh, as far as what people would like to see with the housing market. You want the housing market to thaw out. That's really what it's about. So I'm showing you this because this is what happened to mortgage rates last week. And it also has some of this week. Some of this week is just bouncing around after Monday going up further. So last Friday and Monday, this thing just screamed higher. Remember, a week prior, a day prior to the Federal Reserve rising uh, or raising the, or not raising, and cutting the rates by a half percent. As a result, what we saw that that uh, very next day when they cut is that rates started to go up, and they continue to go up, and they've continued to go up like crazy. And Friday they jumped up, Monday they went up even further, all because of the jobs report. And so what that told us is that that that. Uh, Rates were as low as they were going to get prior to uh, the the uh, Fed cutting rate and already had uh, the Fed rate cut baked into the equation. And then the next day after this, when they heard Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell and Jerry talked, everybody was listening. And as a result, they said, yeah, you know, it's it's not as negative as we thought. And then rates started to rise. That's really what happened. Because keep in mind, we were at seven and a half back in May. And then here we are. We had this giant jump in rates over uh, uh, Friday as well as on Monday. And then it just bounced around this high area that we have not seen in a little bit. And uh, as of, uh, so we went from 6.11% all the way up to 6.62%. And that's where we were as of uh, yesterday. So that's a, it's kind of a significant jump. I mean, it went up a half percent in such a short period of time. One week, uh, one week ago, uh, not even one week ago, three weeks ago, we were at 6.11. So it's, it's gone up, uh, quite a bit since the federal reserve has met. Uh, there's their half a point rate cut turned into a half a point rate hike. Isn't that interesting how that happened? And that's because they're, they stay flat and interest rates go all over the place. And that's because what the uh, market's trying to do is decide, ah, what is the Federal Reserve going to do down the road? So based upon that last report, they thought, ah, you know what, uh, the, the economy, overall economy is hotter than what we thought. So we're approaching those, that, that range, especially this year where we've been stuck because of interest rates being so high, I said, yes, not as many buyers can afford to purchase a home. So there are fewer buyers in the marketplace, which means less demand. 
which also means that there are a lot of homeowners enjoying their low rates that just don't want to sell, like I was talking about. So the overall housing market has been pretty locked up, pretty uh, frozen. And we're doing the number of pending sales and closed sales very similar to the Great Recession. The big difference is we don't have homeowners that are panicking that have to sell, uh, the, that, or actually that we have banks that are, that are they will sell their, the asset, the foreclosures that they, that they have on their books, or all the short sales that hit. They, that's where the banks were in charge of the market. We don't have anything like that. This is just the lack of homes on the market. And we actually, the inventories have raised this year, and we've talked about that, and the only reason why they've been raising is because of the fact that there are more home, a few more homes this year compared to last year that came on, and those are just accumulating on the market. It's still far fewer number of homes coming on the market than where we were prior to uh, COVID. And ever since COVID, not a lot of homes coming on the market. So I just want to keep in mind, where have we been over the last year? Pretty much also, this shows you where we've been, is when the uh, Fed had not cut rates or anything. They've been all the way up from 8% down to uh, 6.11% prior to even cutting. But I'm pointing out the 8% rate. That 8% rate was one year ago last uh, uh, from right now. And actually is one year ago from like a week from now. 8% is a lot higher than where we, where we are at 6.62%. And then even in May, we were at 7.5%. So 7.5% versus 6.62 is almost a full percentage point less. And the argument is that when we were at 6.11 the day before the Fed uh, cut rates by a half percent, that the uh, mortgage-backed securities and 10-year treasuries, all that stuff, but mortgage-backed securities, which, which are uh, drive interest rates, were overbought. They were buying, people were buying, investors were buying them like crazy, and that's why we got all the way down to 6.11%. So then after uh, the Fed met and since the jobs report, they've been selling, and they really sold a lot as of uh, Friday as, and Monday. They sold a lot, so rates are actually too high. They overreacted to the uh, news, which is quite common. And so we've been at 6.11%. And uh, then when we were at 6.11%, I kind of talked about it when I was talking about the market even prior to diving into this week's episode. It, we saw a thawing in the market. We saw a bump in demand in many, many markets, which meant that even some of them that were lagging behind in the bump in demand, it would just take a little while longer with duration for that to work into those uh, metro markets because the vast majority of metro markets actually were seeing a, a bump in demand. And so they would, they, it would impact almost all metros after a while as rates uh, continued to be at that low level of 6.11%, knocking on the door of 5%. And you can imagine, once we get below 6%, it goes into the fives. And the lower it gets into the fives, the more activity it's going to create, the more it's going to lure buyers into the marketplace that can now uh, afford to, uh, to uh, own or look for a home and purchase, as well as many homeowners that feel like, yeah, you know what, the interest rates are just too high. I don't want to sell my, my home and trade it in for a higher rate. Even if they financially could do it, they didn't want to do it. And that's kind of like this, what people call locked in. I just call it hunkering down. They just want to stay because why rock the boat when uh, your, your rate's so, so awesome? But as rates come down, it's making it so that, you know, it's been a long time since we've been under 6%. And matter of fact, it was August of 2022. That's a long time ago at this point. We're looking at 26 months ago. So uh, it's getting such a, it, it's been such a long time that more and more people are just saying, shoot, if we just had something in the fives, it sounds much, much better than where we were. It certainly sounds better than a year ago when we were at 8% interest rates. Uh, so you do the math. What will happen is we'll just have a lot more activity. There will be a lot more pending sales activity because more homeowners will engage as well as a lot more buyers will be in the marketplace. And there will just be more sales, more movement across the country. And that's really what you want for the economy. For all those people rooting against the housing market and wanting it to slow down and for values just to crash, it's just not going to happen because homeowners are, are just so strong. So that if, if things became uh, too locked up, what they would do is just not sell. 
that's really what it, what the bottom line is when it comes to uh, the, the housing market. So if you want the housing market to become a little bit more loose and easier to, to play in, you want rates to come down, period. And so that's what people are rooting for. And so we already saw that big jump in demand. So we know that that jump in demand is going to come down the road when we get interest rates that hover right at right about 6% again, or even go below 6%, which is projected to be, it could be uh, this, this year. We'll just have to wait and see. Uh, and most likely next year. That's, that's uh, what the prognostication is for everybody. That's what we uh, feel with uh, the various trend lines that we are seeing. So we are extremely, extremely data dependent. And just understand that even though we're data dependent, this jobs report and even the inflation uh, report, it's just one point. It not, does not mean that the, all of a sudden the country is, is reigniting, reaccelerating, but that's what all the news stories are. But I'm telling you, this is what's happened with every single report. If you remember back earlier this year in April, they were talking about all the, the data from March. Everybody was talking about how, shoot, the Federal Reserve's not going to do any rate cuts. They were talking no rate cuts. The matter of fact, when the uh, Fed met in June, it was down to one rate cut. Earlier, it was three. Now, then they met again in September at four. Do you understand? The bottom line is they don't really know exactly where we're going to go. So you, they want to look at all of the data, which the underlying data and all that stuff shows to overall to a, a slowdown. So even though you get these data points, I know that most likely these data points is not the beginning of a new trend. It's just a one-off. So it's just one data point. You can't overreact to one data point. I certainly don't. It kind of upsets me that everybody does, but I know what the truth is down the road, that you stick to your guns, you look at the trend analysis, ignore all the noise, ignore all the headlines, and then you'll get the truth of the matter, and that is that trend line most likely is going to continue to be that trend line, but it doesn't follow a perfect path down or up or whichever direction it's going sideways it doesn't it's not a perfect path it's a little wonky over time but you can still see where that path is even per, even looking at the jobs report on Friday versus the jobs report last year because what everybody tends to do is overreact and this is my best analogy is when you buy that your uh, brand new car and you get that first scratch. Oh my gosh, that's terrible. That scratch. I can't believe my car is scratched. You overreact to that one scratch and now you're driving around with a car that has a thousand scratches and if you have one more scratch, you don't even recognize it because you already have plenty of scratches on your car. So uh, I like to look at trends. I'm a trend analysis kind of uh, guy. That's why I have a degree called quantitative economics and decision sciences is also known as trend analysis. That's what we do. So October just happens to be a scary month. It's been scary. This is the third month, uh, third year in a row where we've just had a scary month for data for the month of October. It's terrible, and it all has to do with rates climbing to their heights for the year. Although we're lucky this year, we already were at 7.5. If you want to say that 6.6 .6 is a height, it's not nearly a height like what we had the last couple of years, and we already had much higher rates earlier this year. So the uh, this is la uh, two years ago. And I wanted to kind of talk about where we were in September, which led up to 7.37% uh, interest rates in 2022. It was the highest rate of that year, 2022, when the Fed jacked up rates the whole entire year. They started, the rates were at three and a quarter and made their way up past 7%. That's how much rates changed that year. And as a matter of fact, they came out of Jackson Hole, Wyoming in August and said, we're going to inflict pain on everybody, everybody and companies until we get a a, a control of inflation. And then in September came, just like we had uh, them meet a few weeks ago, they met last year or two years ago in September and said that they're going to raise it by three quarters of a point. And they pledged more hikes. And it just sounded like, oh my gosh, we're going to go a lot higher when the markets were saying, eh, they're high enough. That's not what they said. They said, don't worry, more pain, 
higher rates were continuing to drive up higher and rates continue to go up and peaked out in October. And uh, then along came October of last year. So October of last year, we had a headline from uh, the, the uh, last week, a year ago's headline. And remember, we were at two, about 250,000 uh, th this time around, it, you know, 200 and uh, 254,000 last year, this year, uh, or last year, 336,000, sorry, this year, 254,000. It's way less than it was uh, last year at this time. You see, if you look at the trends, and this is this was one of those trend lines where it was way higher. Well, just like uh, this year we have a trend line, a trend, a little st uh, well, data point that's a lot higher than the trend line. So last year we got this, and this is a CNBC article, payroll soared by 336,000 in September, defying expectations for a hiring slowdown. And everybody went bananas. And uh, then all of a sudden we had uh, rates that hit 8%. And then the Fed was going, uh-oh, this 8% is way too high. We're way too restrictive. Uh, they're over exaggerating what we're going to do, and that's when they started to started to talk about it. Then they met in December and said, "We're going to be cutting uh, rates next year." That's what they said, December of 2023. So uh, this came out. We hit eight percent interest rates. What do you think the uh, employment was like? The payrolls for the month of October, which they announced the beginning of November. So they announced payroll payroll numbers the first week of every month. Uh, and this year, it's actually the first day on November 1st, before the election, we will get this November report. Uh, in the November report, we'll talk about October. And, and here's what the last November it looked like. They talked about October then and said, U.S. payrolls increased by 150,000 in October less than expected. And it was the beginning of then rates really came down because they said, oh, it's not as bad as what we thought. That one data point from the prior month, which is just one data point, just kind of steered us wrong. And uh, sure enough, we saw a reaction and interest rates dropped. So I'm not a big fan of October. You, I've just explained how la last October and, and in 2022, when we hit 7.37%, it's just not a great month for rates. And then this October is proving to be this same kind of scary October for interest rates. So just an overreaction. And uh, that's what I see in the, in the data. We'll have to see. We'll find out November 1st, just a few days before the Friday before elections. And uh, you know what? I can't wait to say then goodbye October. Hello, November. Let's see what the data looks like in November compared to uh, what we've just seen in October, which is a bunch of one-offs. And uh, but we'll wait and see. Uh, the underlying data points to that. We had the initial jobless claims uh, yesterday, and it was way higher than expectations, and nobody was really paying attention. They were still focusing on last week's jobs report and yesterday's CPI. You got to look at the whole picture as well as every uh, everything else. As a matter of fact, we have a data point uh, today uh, that that is another inflation gauge that came back lower than expectations. Just nobody follows it. So uh, anyways, if you like what you're seeing, uh, subscribe to the channel. You can do that by just clicking subscribe and, and hitting the like button. And you can also ask any questions that, you, that you're thinking of. Or if you want to see a, a, a specific uh, program topic, please let us know. Um, if you want to subscribe to our, one of our many housing reports, we have them dot that all over Southern California. There's a report for each county as well as we have one in the Bay Area. And we have one in Phoenix and Vegas. So uh, you know what? Look us up, reportsonhousing.com. Uh, the most recent one was, and we're going to be writing a new report next week. It was a jump in demand. That was for some markets, but there were some metros that didn't quite get that jump in demand because we just weren't at that low and uh, that low rate for long enough. And uh, we wrote a report called Crickets. So it just depended upon which metro you were in as to uh, along the coast here in SoCal and in the Bay Area, they got the jump in demand, but the uh, inland counties, they got crickets. So if you'd like to uh, get a free month, utilize the coupon code HOT. 
So thank you so much for joining us. Appreciate it. This has been a lot of fun to put these together and bring everybody the latest and greatest in the data, what to properly expect, and to kind of like read between the lines. What does all this mean? What does this mean for housing? I think these are just one, one-offs, and we're, over, uh, we're oversold in mortgage-backed securities, which means that as soon as we get a report that shows that things are uh, not as hot as what they had thought, you're going to see people jump back into mortgage-backed securities because it's kind of creating a new top. So we'll see rates float down. That's to come. Thank you so much for joining us. Have a fantastic finished your week and we will see you on the other 